MLB The Show 18 has come out with a ton of new programs that tend to be very expensive because you have to exchange a lot of different souvenirs and a lot of different players to acquire these really good players that eventually lead to the Immortal programs. And I know that everybody wants to be a part of these Immortal programs and get some of their favorite players of all time, but they may just not have the stubs right now to do it. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can make the stubs to do these programs you just have to be willing to put in a little bit of work and that's what I'm here for I'm here to tell you how to make those stubs welcome everybody this is Beanie and let's get into my stub making tutorial all right what is going on everybody um i'm here to tell you how to make stubs now i know the first temptation for everybody is going to be to go in and flip players whether that be diamond players or gold players or whatever um your first temptation is going to be to go in and try to buy i don't know uanus cespedes right here and flip him and make a couple hundred stubs or something like that that's not the best way to do this in my opinion the best way to make stubs is through equipment through diamond equipment and through a few select pieces of gold equipment now all of these seem to be really expensive or whatever but and i will say that there is right now there is a tad bit of risk in using this method because the market is somewhat volatile i have had a few situations like with a ritual number one supporter where i bought overnight i bought one of these uh number one supporters for about 7,000 stubs at the time it was uh, the the going rate for it was about 11,000 so i plan to make uh you know about 4,000 stubs on that well i wake up this morning and the market has kind of crashed back down and it's at 6,000. Every now and then that will happen, but if you can get these items out quickly out of your inventory and flip them very consistently, you will make subs off of it in the long run. You might lose a little bit here or there if something weird happens, but in the long run you will make stubs. But the only problem with this is that you have to have you have to make the stubs or you have to have stubs to make stubs. And a lot of people right now are sitting on very few stubs. And for those people, I would say just do what you can right now to get as many stubs as possible. Even if you have to drop like five dollars or something just to get a little a little influx of stubs um, to to be able to to flip and make stubs of your own. Uh, I think it's worth it to do that. I, I usually don't recommend spending money on the game, but right now you don't have a ton of other options other than just grinding things out, maybe. Um, so just try to get a small little influx of stubs, and then if you, let's say you have 8,000 stubs, go in here, buy this bat, buy the Mizuno bat, buy this Legend in the Cleat, flip it, do that a few times, then and at some point you'll get to 20,000 stubs, and then you'll be able to buy two of these guys, and then you know, just it, it'll start to compound upon itself. Um, so what do I do whenever I am flipping? Well, this is what I do. I go into my inventory screen because it just makes navigation a little bit easier. I click on one of these items and then I go over, I, I just kind of side scroll over back to the equipment to where it shows me all of the equipment. The reason I do this is because, um, let's say that you have a buy order or something go through and you don't want to go through here and search for whatever it was you bought. Um, you can just back out and you're at the inventory screen right now and you can see exactly what you just bought. Click on it and then go back to the market. It just makes it a little bit more efficient for me to start on this screen so I start on that screen and I come over here to the equipment and I filter out to diamond and then once I'm done with all the diamond equipment I go over to gold and as you can see there are a lot of really good gold items to flip so you don't necessarily have to start out with uh, with the diamond equipment you can buy this Louisville slugger and make a thousand stubs off that uh, another important thing is you are gonna have to do some quick maths on this you're gonna have to do a little bit of math uh, just to just to cover the 10% tax so if I were to buy this uh, this bat for 3100 stubs I could expect to make about 1400 stubs back because once I sell it for 5,000 um, they're gonna take 500 away from me so I'll end up making about 4500 instead of uh, instead of 5,000 so just factor that in whenever you're doing everything and you want big gaps look for big gaps um, that that really cover the tax and still leave you with a 
with a, a good profit. But tr try to get over a thousand subs. Sometimes you might have to settle for like eight or nine hundred or something, but mostly be looking to get over a thousand stubs. And with the diamond equipment, I like to look to get over two thousand stubs per flip because the gaps can be a lot bigger there. So, uh, like, look at this. This is a fantastic example of something that you could really take advantage of. If you bought uh, a Hirachi Pro right here for 3000 there's only one other order on the market. So anything under 12000 you can kind of set your price and maybe you'll get lucky and have someone buy this off of you for, let's say, 9,000 stubs. And then you made a huge profit off of a gold batting glove. That is crazy. So many stubs to be made on the market, guys. But okay, diamond equipment. What are some good pieces of diamond equipment to kind of target? Well, these higher priced ones can be very, very lucrative. Uh, if you can manage to flip something like this old hickory bat right here, buy it for 16000 and then sell it for twenty four after tax, you'll end up making right at 6,000 stubs, which would be a crazy flip. Um, these can sometimes be a little bit more volatile and a little bit more risky, and I wouldn't recommend dipping into these until you have at least over 100,000 subs to where you can really absorb the cost of doing business with that. Um, and, but some of the other really good ones are these ones that you can buy for under 10,000 stubs, uh, like this Mizuno Pro Maple. Uh, put a buy order in for this and maybe uh, somebody will sell it to you. Maybe you can pawn this off on someone for like 12,999 stubs or maybe even 3,449, something like that. But always just undercut it by one. So if I'm putting in a buy order right here, I'm going to put it in for 8,870. That puts me one stub above this guy. A lot of people get really annoyed when you do this, but it's the most cost efficient way of doing business. It's the best way to work the market. And then once I bought that or once someone sold that to me, I would create a sell order, come over here, 13,449 and that would leave me with 12,104 stubs that is about a 3,300 stub profit that is very 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 good for an item that's priced that way so, but you're not always going to be getting, uh, you know, three, four, six thousand at a time. Sometimes it's going to come in one thousand, two thousand uh, chunks, you know. So, like this, uh, this item right here, this legend and a cleat. You buy this for eight thousand four hundred, and you sell it for eleven thousand nine hundred ninety-seven. Let's just say you you did that. Well, it would it would price you. Uh, what would that be? That'd be about tw about one thousand two hundred stubs. So you'd make about 10,700. That's about a 2,300 stub profit right there. Not bad, but not as good as these other ones, but it's very efficient. You can just, you can, you know, buy this and sell this really quick, make 2,300 stubs, and that's 2,300 stubs that you didn't have before. So don't kind of turn your nose at these that, uh, that can only make you small profits, because those small profits do add up, and the smaller gaps usually end up being quicker flips, but, um, you know, not, not always. That's kind of, that's kind of tentative. So... I know that a lot of you guys are just really just kind of turned off by the tediousness of this because it seems very tedious to just go through and put your put your orders in and uh, and wait for them to sell and then sell them and then once you get undercut or overcut on this then you have to take all of your orders down and put them back up and all that. Well, I think that there are a lot uh, more fun, not really fun, but more efficient and more uh, less tedious ways of doing this and that is go through and put in as many orders as you possibly can on uh, on these until you have no stubs left or no spots left to put any more orders uh, just go through put in as many buy and sell orders as you can then go and play a game go and do whatever it was that you were doing aside from the market and then once you come back once you're finished with whatever you were doing go back to the market see what sold see what you bought um, um, put whatever you bought back on the market and then cancel the rest of your orders 
and uh, and just go through and rinse and repeat the process of buying these buying these up, and that'll give you a way of kind of accomplishing all this without it being super tedious, and you'll be making a steady stream of stubs or money or stubs money whatever. You'll be making a steady stream of that uh, while you play the game all year. This is something that you can do all year. You never have to stop. You can always keep making stubs using this method. Now, a lot of people will tell you that the best way to make stubs is to invest in players that you think are going to get better over the course of this season. And that is a good way to make stubs. And I know a lot of people who have hit it really, really big uh, investing in someone like Aaron Judge, who at the time was like a common when the game started last year. And then he bumped up all the way to a gold, but I don't think he got to diamond. But there are some players who go from bronze to diamond or something like that. Corey Seager is a good example of that a couple years ago. And uh, th this is a good way to make stubs, but it is very, very, very risky. It, let, let's, uh, let's take a player who I think has a very, very high ceiling in, uh, in, in the majors this year. Um, and that is AJ Minter. Where is he at? What, uh, what overall is he? I know he's not very high. I know he's on the Braves. So let's, let's find the Braves. Okay, someone like AJ Minter. He's a 62 overall right now. Let's say that he comes out and he is just dominant this year. I think there's a very, very good chance that he is. You so right now you go and you buy a ton of him. You buy, uh, you know, like a hundred AJ Minters or something, and uh, that that's there's very high risk there because if he doesn't make it to gold or um, or diamond or something like that you're you're gonna be have, you're gonna have sunk uh, quite a bit of stubs probably like 10 twelve thousand stubs into buying this card and you didn't get any reward at all but if it pays off and he ends up going gold and you can sell him for a thousand a piece that's a hundred thousand stubs or God forbid he goes diamond that's five thousand stubs per quick sell so that would be just a crazy crazy uh, profit off that well that, that'd be 500,000 stubs it'd be insane and it only cost you about 10 12 thousand to do so it can be worth it but it is risky and I believe that my method of flipping diamond equipment and, and some select gold items I believe that it is a little bit uh, less risky less volatile and more consistent it just takes a lot more work and a lot more uh, want to, to do this so if you're one of those guys who is doesn't have a ton of stubs right now but you want to do these uh, these programs the career arcs uh, these regular ones down here and eventually the immortals if you're somebody that wants to do that you definitely need to start right now making these stubs because you're gonna be able to put them to use a little bit later and also I know that I have um, that I have already bought um, all of the equipment needed for for these guys down here. I said yesterday that it took twenty thousand. It was more like forty or fifty thousand to to buy all of these guys. Um, and uh, th these guys up here, the the missions for them are very expensive as well. Um, if I were you, I would do everything else that you can in these in these career arcs and in these missions down here. Um, and, and if you're looking to save stubs, I would hold off on buying the souvenirs necessary right now because I do think that there's a good chance that the souvenirs kind of depreciate in value later in the year. They deflate and they aren't as expensive as they are now to do. So if you're looking to kind of save stubs, wait like a few weeks, maybe a month to see if their prices go down and if they do that's when you can buy them and in the meantime you can use the the subs that you would have been using for that you can be using them to flip in the market so yeah guys that is going to do it for this video on how to make stubs i hope it helped you i hope it kind of made you see how uh, you know, if you don't have stubs right now, not all hope is lost. You can still make stubs. You can still uh, be a get all of those players that you want as long as you're willing to put in the work. Guys, yesterday I got over 
I got almost 70 subs in one day, which was crazy. And I just want to say thank you to you guys for subbing. Thank you to Fuzzy for sending some guys my way. I'm sure Shelfie probably did too. All of you guys are awesome. I love all of you. Shelfie, Fuzzy, Jivy, uh, M. Frisk, uh, you know, Mighty Goat. All of you guys, I love y'all. Y'all have helped me out so much in starting this channel. And if you guys ever need anything, I will be here for you. Uh, I consider you guys really good friends. So, uh, so yeah, I love you guys. I will see y'all later. But until then, peace.